Hey there, it's Jenny from Southern Savers. Welcome to our Monday night Google Hangout. Um, this week the plan is just to talk about kind of the myths of where folks think they're saving money and where you're really not saving money. And what that also will entail is talking a lot about the basics of how kind of you can really save a ton with coupons if you know the right rules to play, in a sense, and the games to play. So we'll talk a lot about basics, but I'm also totally cool with going to wherever your questions are. Um, so if you are watching this on Southern Savers, make sure you click over to the Google Hangout to ask questions. And if you're watching this later, we always have to add this part, you're watching this on YouTube long after we've had tonight's Hangout, you can always go over to the Google Hangout, click on the box that pops up in the YouTube video, and you'll be able to actually go straight to each question. So you don't have to watch the whole hour-long Hangout after the fact. You can just go to the questions that you would have been interested in hearing the answer for, just so you know how it all works. Um, now, I'm going to do some basics, and then we'll go to the questions that are there after I finish. So there are three really huge myths that most of us follow in grocery shopping and honestly it's because we were brainwashed back in the 80s and we just took it hook line and sinker um, but just to hit them most of us think that you save more money to be in a big box store not true most of us think that we need to buy house brands um, a lot of folks that aren't couponing they would go house brands first and they also go bulk first you know I have twins and um, they came first and when I had them in diapers I personally believed that if someone would deliver a pallet of diapers to our house that now we would save money if I could just find the biggest package of diapers that they ever made that that was the deal and that's not really the deal the best deal on paper goods on diapers on anything is usually getting the smallest size package because those are on sale because those are what I have coupons for so let's hit why all of those are kind of wrong. First off, I won't save money to be in Walmart. I won't save money to buy all my groceries in Target or a big box store. Are there deals to be had in any of these stores? Yeah, there, there are occasional deals that are going to pop up here and there. Target especially, we have a lot of fun in Target, but no deals in Target that I'm going to go and get enough for six weeks. Most Target deals only have one Target store coupon or unlimited in some factor by the number of coupons that I have. Um, so I'm going in and I'm getting one or two. What in reality I want you to get in the habit of is that we go to a grocery store for our groceries. We go to a drug store for anything else that's not grocery. So cleaning supplies, paper goods, personal care, diapers, etc. Why do we do that? Because both of those stores have sales. They have real sales. Walmart has no sales. Walmart has everyday low prices which means nothing ever goes on sale here. That's not what our goal is. Our goal is to only purchase an item when it's on sale and a real sale is like 40% off or more. You're not ever going to see that at Walmart. Even a Walmart rollback is never going to be 40%. It's going to be 10 cents, 12 cents, and that's where Target comes in too. If you're ever walking through Target, lift up the sale tag because they keep the original price right underneath it and you're going to see that the original price is maybe 10 cents less uh, or more than the sale price today. It's just not a discount. We think it's a discount because they're telling us a discount, but it's not a discount. So I want to be in a grocery store for these items, buying the real sales that are in our grocery store. What I'm not doing in the grocery store, I'm not buying everything. We need to change the way we shop and that's a true basic which is that we have to go and off of the fact if we make a grocery shopping list and we buy what's on the list because when you stand in your pantry and you make a list of what you're out of it's just a big huge list of everything that's not on sale today I, I can't shop that way uh, I have to shop based on the sales so when I go into Publix or even for those of you who are in Harris Teeter, Harris Teeter is the best example for this because Anything not on sale is incredibly expensive. So we're not in there to just buy everything on your shopping list. We're in there to buy what's on sale. 
And if you have things that you have to have, I can't wait another week, there's no way I can wait until this item goes on sale, I must get it right now, you want to get one week worth of that item, and honestly, if you're a Harris Eater, you don't want to get it there. Uh, you want to go to Aldi or you want to go to Walmart and buy the house brand on the off-sale items. But all of our sale items, we're in a grocery store and we're buying enough for six weeks when they go on sale. Now, house brand versus national brand, just to hit that one, and then we'll start to hit some questions and come back to bulk and bulk versus small. But house brand versus national brands, this one's super simple. You know, when was the last time you walked into the store and you saw house brand pasta for free? Never, doesn't happen. Uh, but you're going to see national brand pasta for less than 20 cents a box almost every week. The brands are always changing, but we have coupons. Perfect. House brand's never going to touch that. And that is probably 95% of everything you're going to run into in the store. The, the national brand on sale with a coupon will always be cheaper than the house brand product um, because we don't see huge sales on them and we have no coupons for them. Uh, so the national brand will always work out. And that's kind of fun. All of a sudden, you're buying national brand products in a grocery store and this makes no sense to you but you're saving a ton off of what you would have gotten in Walmart or even the house brand prices so it does work. Um, let, let's hit questions and we'll come back to a few other parts of that. Brian says my store has a limit of four coupons that they will double. I handed the cashier four 50 cent coupons and did not stop to check and realized that only one doubled when I got home what could have caused that? A couple of things could have. Um, I don't know if they were four of the same coupon or not, and as in you bought four of the same product and you used four identical 50 cent coupons, or if they were four different 50 cent coupons. Sometimes coupons do state do not double on the top. Uh, now, that said, just because they state it, doesn't mean that they don't double either. This is tricky. A long time ago I would have told you exactly how to read it and exactly how to know whether it would double or whether it wouldn't double on the computer system. But honestly now there's not a really great way to know. Most of them, if they say do not double, they still double. But occasionally you run into a coupon that doesn't. Um, it says do not double, it's not going to double at the register. Uh, the only way to catch that is if I'm watching as they're checking out. Some stores will override it and still give you the 50 cents and some stores will refuse. Um, but that's just like you just having to pay attention as you're checking out. The other thing that could have played in would be, well, you saying that only one of them doubled, this probably isn't it, but some stores do have a limit on the number of like coupons that they'll double. So how I was kind of mentioning if it was four of the exact same coupon, um, there are some stores that won't do that. So like Harris Teeter, for instance, they'll only double three like coupons per transaction. They'll double up to 20 per day, but only they can only be identical in sets of three. Um, beyond that, I'm not quite sure why only one would double out of the four, um, other than it possibly being a do not double. What you could try to do, though, is to go back in and to ask them and say, hey, I gave you four coupons. You know, Obviously, you're not able to show them those coupons unless you had more. But to say, you know, they should have all doubled and they didn't, can you explain why? Odds are they can't, um, but sometimes they'll go ahead and fix the receipt or they'll give you a $1.50 credit, um, something like that, to help you just feel better about the whole transaction. It never hurts to ask, though. If a coupon beeps, does that mean that you're using it incorrectly? I've had this happen to me many times when I was 100% positive that the coupon was for the item I was purchasing. It can mean a number of things. Um, coupons now beep for a lot more than just the wrong product. Uh, they also can track expiration date. They um, track sizes. They track scents. Um, they also can track multiple products. So in other words, if I had a coupon, we see this a lot in the fall, I have a coupon for Hershey's chocolate for um, marshmallows and for graham crackers. Two years ago, that coupon wouldn't have even looked for three different products by three different manufacturers. But now, the new data bar, which is the really long double layer bar, it looks for all three. 
it knows to look for all three. It knows exactly what you're supposed to purchase. Um, and it also can depend on the store. So it could be expiration date. It could be, you know, wrong size, et cetera, that, you know, some small print you didn't notice. Um, but it also can be store. So, for instance, if you're in Walgreens, Walgreens computers love to beep. And this happens in other stores, too. And you just kind of have to know the system as to why it's beeping. So I'm not 100% sure what store you're in that it, you're having this problem with. Um, but to give you an example for Walgreens, it is imperative in Walgreens that you always count the number of items that you're purchasing and you make sure that you never try to use more coupons than the products you purchase. And that may not make sense, but those register awards that we would normally pay for, um, we would just use as currency to pay for items. Register awards are really manufacturer coupons. They're blank. They don't care what they attach to but they're manufacturer coupons. So if I'm coming in the door and I have four products and I have a coupon for every single one of those from the Sunday paper and I have a register award, I really have five coupons and four products and you can't do that. So in Walgreens, I have to have a fifth product and it could be the case in your grocery store. Maybe they're counting in store coupons into the totals to where if you're trying to use way more coupons than products purchased, the computer's not understanding that. Store coupons shouldn't count into those totals, but you honestly never really know how the computers are programmed in stores. So sometimes it's just figuring all of the little tiny quirks of your particular store can be the trickiest part. Um, but I would look at the number of products that you're purchasing versus the number of coupons you're using and see if that has anything to do with it as well. Um, I've also found this may be completely uh, at the other end of the spectrum, but there are a number of stores that after you use so many coupons, they kind of freeze you out and they actually will require a manager's key. Um, one time doing going to Harris Heater for Super Doubles, saved a ton because I mean they're super doubling two dollar coupons and they're now four dollars off but you save so much that a manager has to come over and approve um, before you can fully check out because of the value of the savings over the total purchase um, so there's lots of little tiny things that are factored into every computer and every different store every store is different so it would be hard to completely tell you why they're beeping but that's a number of reasons hopefully it helps is it possible to feed a family of four on $50 a week? Yes, completely. Um, you need to negate some of the kind of fluff in your, your grocery budget. So we're not talking juice. We're not talking snacks. We're talking meals. Let's get three meals a day on the table for $50 a week and basic meals. So we're gluten-free in our house, but it doesn't mean that I go and I buy tons of gluten-free products, especially gluten-free packaged products, those are incredibly expensive. It just means that we have basic meals in the sense of we may have pork chops, rice, and a vegetable. If your budget is super tight, rice is the cheapest starch you can put on the table, especially right now because we just got a coupon this week that's going to make one pound bags of rice free if you have a store that double. Uh, so go crazy, get a lot of that coupon and you've got free rice, um, let's go vegetables and cheap vegetables. That's going to be canned or frozen. Um, so now we've got our rice, we've got a veggie, and we go meat. Right now, meat-wise, we got to stay away from beef. Most people are not going to be able to afford beef for the rest of the year. So we've got to look at chicken and pork. It's kind of back to the 80s. I don't know if any of you were alive in the 80s. Hopefully uh, a number of us were, but um, wasn't a lot of beef on our tables. It was a lot of chicken. So chicken, pork, fish, um, those are going to be your go-to for meats. And then for meats and fresh vegetables, keep in mind, too, the best way to save for your budget is to buy in bulk. Um, it's to buy in a local, through a local butcher in bulk, uh, or if you're in my neck of the woods, through like a local restaurant supply store. We have a U.S. Foods Chef store here that's amazing. Uh, and through a farmer's market, buying in bulk. I don't just mean like buying a little tiny basket of peaches from the farmer's market. I mean buying a half bushel basket of peaches and cutting them up and freezing them. So all of that is going to help you. It's just building your stockpile, not just on canned and packaged, but also building your stockpile on meat and produce that's going to help the most on sticking with that budget.
Um, Yesenia says, sometimes on the list I see 50 cents off one cereal, and when I go to print it, uh, it says 50 cents when you buy one, and it's really when you buy two. Um, sometimes for me, it is that that can be a tricky one because I'm not able to print all of the coupons. Um, if I did, that's all I would do all day long. So if it's an error on Southern Savers, just stick it in the blue box that's down the bottom, the report and error box at the bottom of the list, or email me. I'll gladly fix it. Um, we try to catch them all, but with I think right now the database has 10,000 coupons in it, so there are definitely going to be some errors. Uh, and I apologize for them, but just let me know whenever you see anything and I will gladly fix it. Um, another question from Yesenia, do you think shopping at Aldi for groceries and couponing at CVS for toiletries and household goods saves you the same compared to couponing at Publix and CVS? I seem to pay an average of $80 at Aldi, but I feel like it's so much more than Publix even with coupons. It kind of depends on what you're buying personally. I would kind of, what I do, this is probably the best way to do it, rather than comparing it to what you're buying, this is how we look at it. For me, Aldi is our buy price. So I know that canned vegetables and Aldi are like 58 cents a can, and I know all these other products and their prices. Well, if I can go into the grocery store and I know that canned vegetables are 40 cents a can, this is a great time to buy them. Um, so I'm looking for the deals in the grocery store that I know are gonna be Aldi prices. That's what we're gonna grab. I will tell you, most of the deals in the grocery store are going to be Aldi prices. Yes, it takes some more time to cut all the coupons and kind of be ready for all the deals, but even down to cereal, our kind of average price for cereal that we are willing to pay is less than a dollar for every box that we buy, and you're just not going to be able to get that in Aldi. Um, so most of the can and packaged goods cheaper in the grocery store. Now, where Aldi's going to win is in dairy. Uh, their milk, their butter, their cheese, it's cheaper by far than most grocery stores. Cheese, we do see coupons and deals on, but milk and butter very rarely. Their meat also tends to be cheaper. That's one where you need to do some homework. I'm not going to tell you any past stories, but I won't buy it. Um, so everybody's different on what they're looking for. But dairy would be kind of a go-to for Aldi if you had one that was right there and you're okay with making a, sec a second trip. I, however, am not okay with making a second trip just for a gallon of milk. Um, and I tend to stock up on our butter when it's on sale in the, like a crazy good three-day sale or something in Bilo. But if all I needed was a gallon of milk from Aldi, I would rather pay a dollar more in the grocery store than make a whole nother trip. And I know that seems crazy to confess, but dragging along four kids with me, I would pay you a dollar to walk the milk to my car. Uh, some days versus unbuckling all of those children and dragging them. We would just have to be honest. So for me, I'm not making the trip into Aldi um, just for the one or two things that the grocery store didn't win on. Um, CVS, you're doing great. That is where I would be for everything else. But I, I can't say that we would purchase a ton in Aldi. Uh, Jennifer asks, what's the best way to contact corporate email or snail mail? Or is it even worth it? My local store has a coupon policy that they can refuse to take any coupon at their discretion, and I feel that they abuse this and refuse lots of legitimate coupons. Um, honestly, I think the best way is to call corporate. Uh, it's old school, I know, but when they hear your voice, they are able to kind of tell so much more as to what you're saying and your frustration and just you're able to describe a lot more. They're able to ask you questions right behind it, and you can fill in more information if they had it. Um, I would just go that route, especially if you're really frustrated with what's going on versus just sending an email that some person's going to open and say, oh, I've read 10 like this today, and they send you this canned response right back. Um, I would call them. Uh, and you may not want to do that, but it's not going to take long. And they can't spend all day on the phone with you anyway, so you're probably talking about maybe five minutes, but you'll get much more results out of a phone call. The store I was at said the item I was buying was one of the excluded items. It excludes frozen dips or salsa, and it was a rice item. How do I handle the situation when it happens? When the cashier says it's not one of the items, and it cashier says it's one of the items, when in, in reality it's not. Um, so I'm guessing you're talking about a coupon, and my 
first guess is that it's like um, Old El Paso or something like that. Um, but you've got a rice item. It's obviously not frozen. It's not a dip, and it's not a salsa. It's not one of the exclusions. The first thing that I would always try is just to ask them to for them to not really be the say all and end all, but instead to say, hey, can we just scan this and can we just see what whether or not it's going to work? Because the computer should know. Um, and you know, and even say, you know what, if it won't scan, I'm completely fine with not using it because you know it's going to scan. You know you bought the right item. This is really just them playing judge and jury over the coupon. Um, that's your first step always is just to ask, can we just scan this? If they still refuse, you can try to get a manager or you can just look at them and say, great. I don't want it. I will just go use this coupon in a store that gets that this is the right product uh, and not here. Um, and kind of just leave it at the register, get the rest of what you wanted to get. I am not an arguer, so I don't rarely go to the manager level. I just go ahead and say, I'm good. You keep that product, I will go down the road to a store that gets that I'm buying the right item. And it might be snotty to kind of say it in that manner, but that's how I'm feeling. And that is my way of not being aggressive with you, but like being passive aggressive. Um, but first, just trying to get them to scan it and see if that will work. Um, okay. Oh, Brian's answering on the identical. It was four identical cereal boxes using four identical 50 cent coupons. Um, so with that, Brian, I. I don't know why it would have only doubled one of them and not doubled the other three. It would just be to kind of ask the store, okay, this happened. Have you heard of anyone else having this happen? And if they, you know, don't have a reason to just kind of say, well, what can we do about it on this situation? Because this is really frustrating and that's $1.50 that I lost out on, on not having those other three coupons all double. If they're not willing to do anything about it this time, uh, it's going to have to just be kind of a lesson learned. I used to always joke in workshops, and now we are always running out of time, so I don't ever get there. But um, most of us, when we coupon, we spend so much time getting our coupons ready to go to the store. We spend a ton of time in the store. But when we get to checkout land, we kind of zone out because you're like, oh, I'm done. We're here. But you're not really done. We're not done until we pay, until they tell us how much we owe. And that's the hard part uh, is – you know, for me, it's training my children to know, like, you do not talk to mama right now. Mama is checking out. Um, you know, this is the important part, to watch the screen, to make sure that everything she's doing is right. I'll even get kind of difficult in a sense. You know, let's say I'm in, in a grocery store and no bag person comes up. And it seems nice to start to bag your own groceries. While it is nice, I will help you bag my groceries after you're done scanning everything because I want to stand here and make sure that everything rings up the price that I expected it to ring up and every coupon comes off the way that I expected it to come off because I don't want to get in the car and be wondering, okay, what didn't work and have to sit here and study a receipt only to figure out that now i got to go back into the store. So long story short, um, I would go in and I would ask, and after that, just kind of train yourself to become this eagle eye as you're checking out so that you can catch everything possible. Um, okay. Let's see. Is there anything you can do when you forget to use a coupon or you realize the days after and no longer have the receipt? Uh, if you still have the receipt, most stores will st still take the coupon within a certain number of days, just coming in and saying, hey, I completely meant to use these. Here's my receipt. Will you please apply them to what I purchased? Most stores will. I remember this was a number of years ago. My middle child, who is now six, she was probably two. We got home. I'm putting her in bed at night, and I'm taking her pants off of her to find that her pockets are just stuffed with coupons. And that all through our shopping trip, she had been sitting in the front buggy just helping herself to the little stash of coupons that I had sitting in a bag right behind her. Uh, so I went in with these wadded up coupons the next morning and the receipt and said, hey, I had planned to use all of these and I had a two-year-old who was absconding with them the whole time that we shopped and they gladly took every single one of them. I mean, since then, this is not the same thing has happened, but 
Um, we've definitely forgotten them. Never had a problem with a store not taking them after the fact. Uh, just don't try to do it crazy long. Like we're not talking two weeks from now. We're talking like tomorrow within the next two or three days. Without a receipt, really hard to do. Um, there are only a few stores in the South that have a recall system that doesn't require a, a receipt, and most of them aren't grocery, like Lowe's. Uh, Lowe's home improvement store you can go in with the card that you paid with and they can bring up your past receipt most stores cannot do that um, so just be uh, always cognizant of what you do with your receipts I guess a lot of folks hold on to their receipts anyway just put them in a big huge envelope and clean them out every month that way you have them in case next week I found a rebate a mail-in rebate deal that I didn't know about this week Let's say I went into the store this week and I got some crazy good deals on Pantene only to find out that this whole month there had been this great $30 Procter & Gamble beauty mail-in rebate. Well, I just bought all this Pantene, but I don't have the receipt. So just hold on to all your receipts. Stick them in an envelope. At the end of the month, clean out the envelope. But if I do come across something, I'm set. Or if I have a problem, I'm set there too. If you purchase an item and receive a reward, like an extra care buck or a plus up from Rite Aid, you return the item for whatever reason, but you've spent the reward, do they refund minus the reward? They do not. So the refund in the drugstores is usually the full amount that you paid in the store, um, not taking into account any reward that was printed at the register. That said, there are a number of people who shop in the drugstore specifically to take advantage of this, and that's all they do is do returns, so please don't become that person. Um, but you can get a full, re for full return price um, for the item versus having it deducted off of the reward. Uh, the only stores that are going to deduct it is going to be Target. So if you do a deal that gives you a Target gift card back, um, you'll see the return value on the receipt. They've taken into account the $5 gift card that you received. So can't go crazy there with returns, but Target's also incredibly difficult with returns. So they weren't going to let you do it anyway. Um, at Harris Teeter, could they pull up a past receipt with your VIC card? I am not 100% sure. I don't have a Harris Teeter near me, so I've probably only shopped in one maybe 15 times total in my life. Um, it's something that you could ask at customer service, but you may find out pretty quickly that they can't. I know in our area, my bio, um, our CVSs and whatnot, they can't with your receipt, with your card, um, but I don't know what Harris Heater's capability is. Is self-checkout a bad idea when using coupons? It depends on your store. Um, so if your store allows you to do your own coupons at self-checkout, which this is incredibly rare, most of them have it taped over in our area, and you have to have the assistant in the self-checkout area do your coupons for you, that's fine um, to do that. It isn't what self-checkout is meant for, though. If I've got 40 coupons and she's having to deal with that and all the other ones are now broken because she can't get to them, but if I've got a small trip or I can do the coupons myself, um, then yes, self-checkout's great. I love self-checkout only because I feel like a three-year-old getting to play grocery the whole time, scanning my, my groceries, but you, know, you can do it for just the ease of checking out if you want. Um, Ashley B. asks, are there some publixes that don't double coupons? I know that South Georgia doesn't double. Yes, actually, um, Publix is in Florida, do not double. And Publix is along the Florida-Georgia border, do not double. They consider South Georgia, Florida. Um, they also consider some of the more coastal towns as Florida. So my husband and I used to live in Bluffton, South Carolina, which is right outside of Hilton Head. It's a crazy expensive place to live no stores double there either. They consider that the Florida region, even though you're way up in South Carolina. And Publix has also decided that North Carolina stores, as they open them, will not double. Currently, they only have about two that are open, and they have a number of others that are under construction. But no Publixes in North Carolina will double. They've also taken some South Carolina stores that are along the, the North Carolina, South Carolina border, and they've made those stores not double as well. Uh, it's a bad call um, everywhere except Florida. In Florida, there are no stores that double, so they don't have to com 
compete by doubling. In North Carolina, South Carolina, Georgia, etc., there are a number of stores that double. They have to compete by continuing to double. So we'll see what they choose to do in North Carolina as they continue to move in. Um, and Hudson agrees, keeping receipts for a month doesn't cost a thing and can really pay off. Yes. Just have an, even if you don't even go with an envelope, just have a drawer. Just shove them in a drawer and go through it at the end of the month. Just make it part of your end of the month coupon clean out, clean out receipts. Um, you will at least once a year be very happy that you choose to do that uh, for all kinds of reasons. Um, okay, so let's continue on through. Phoebe has a, a kind of a comment that um, goes along with the next part of what I wanted to talk about, which is bulk versus small packages. So she's getting rolled oats, um, $16.75 for 25 pounds of them, which seems to be a deal compared to the three pound packages in the store. Now, I can't say that bulk versus buying the smaller package is always you know, a bad decision in every situation, because it's not. There are definitely some moments, Phoebe, where the bulk size is going to win out, but if I've got coupons that pair in with any size product, so for instance, let's say that we're talking about Bob's Red Mill rolled oats. That's what we would purchase in our house because they're gluten-free, they're organic, they make my husband happy. So I'm buying these rolled oats. I can get them in a 12-ounce bag, I can get them in a 25-ounce bag, or I can get them in like a four-pound bag. Um, I have a coupon for $1.50 off any Bob's Red Mill product. Well, if the price per ounce of all three of those is still pretty similar, I actually have a much better deal to buy the smallest bag and use that $1.50 coupon or to buy four of that small bag and use four $1.50 coupons than I would to buy the four pound bag uh, and use one coupon. That is why I would say it is usually best to buy the smallest package and to buy more of the small package and use more of the coupon than one large package with one coupon. Uh, it just depends on the price difference between the really large and the really small. So if we go to diapers, diapers are an amazing example for this. Jumbo size diapers, it's the smallest pack, you gotta love the names that they come up for diapers. Jumbo size packs on sale, usually about $9 a pack for the national brands, Pampers, Huggies. Huge boxes, which would be like the value box, usually about 35 bucks. Difference between these two, it's about three to four jumbo packs in one value size pack. And we'll say four, just to give them the sake of a deal on that one. Four times $9 on sale is $36, huge big value box, $35. So just going with the sale, value box wins. But I have coupons. I have four $2 off Pampers printable coupons. That's $8 off the little four jumbo packs or $2 off the big old value box. Um, so on that one, we already won and that's the coupons, but we have one whole other part of it and that is that those jumbo size packs, those little tiny packs, tend to always be part of drugstore deals. So now I've earned $10 in plus ups back or $10 in extra care bucks back where I wouldn't have gotten that from that big huge box. So many times on bulk deals, I've got to go down to the unit. So even on diapers, I would tell you that you have a buy price per diaper, not by package, but per diaper. So if I'm buying size three diapers, I don't really want to pay more than like 14 cents a diaper. And usually you can get them significantly cheaper. Uh, but you're just going to kind of learn what the prices are for your items. I want to have, you know, I want to be comparing my rolled oats down to the ounce or down to whatever unit I can to make sure that I'm comparing kind of apples to apples in a sense uh, as we're checking out. And the same for comparing a warehouse club to a grocery store. You know, if you're looking at the Costco membership deal that ends tonight, it'll end up costing you five bucks to get a membership to Costco. That's a pretty good deal to have a membership to Costco, but will you save any money on anything in Costco? Possibly not. 
Uh, you've got to walk the store and kind of know your individual prices. We don't have a Costco in our area, so I can't bash on Costco. I've actually never gotten to go in one, um, but Sam's, we do have. I can go in, I can buy eight small 15 ounce cans of tomatoes, and those eight cans of tomatoes in a little tiny box, in a sense, are going to cost me about six dollars. So it comes out to about 75 cents a can. I can get canned tomatoes a lot cheaper than that in a grocery store. And that's one of thousands of examples, but you just have to make sure that you're kind of comparing the same things to each other and that you've really factored in the, how much you would save if you could use a coupon on every single product in a smaller sense than the really big sense. Hopefully that makes sense to you guys. Um, Amy asks, what percentage of coupons do I use that come from newspaper inserts versus printing coupons online? Um, Amy, I would say for me, probably about 75% come online and 25% come from newspaper inserts. And that number has gone up. I have stopped getting my local paper. Sorry if you live in my area. And I have started getting a newspaper from an online um, subscription service that just sells inserts. So I actually get inserts from the Atlanta paper by doing this. Huge difference in the number of coupons in the Atlanta paper versus my local area. Um, so I, I would have said before for my local paper, probably like 5% were coming from the paper because I would go to look and none of them would be there. Just We just didn't get them in our area. Atlanta does get them. So about 25% from the paper. 75 cent or 75 percent from printables. A few reasons for that, um, but the biggest is that printable coupons tend to be a higher value than the ones that come in the paper. So I can have a dollar off coupon for Pampers in the paper, or a two dollar off Pampers coupon that I can print online. Um, so I'm going to always choose the higher value over the newspaper lower value. Um, twice I've let CVS Extra Care Bucks expire because there was nothing I needed or wanted. Any suggestions when this happens? I was going to buy toilet paper, but it was still too expensive after the Extra Care Buck. Um, two things. First, I've never met a CVS that would not take an expired Extra Care Buck. So don't throw them away. If you let them expire, whether it's on purpose or by accident, always walk in the door and just say, you know what? I screwed up and I let these expire, can I still use them? Always phrase it as a question. They will always say yes. Um, the reason is that your store gets a bonus at the end of the year based on their redemption rates of extra care bucks. They're very happy to help you redeem them. Now, if you don't want to be intentional on the expiration date, you know, I'm not really trying to say, oh yeah, just hold on to them forever and don't worry about it. We don't really want to use expired coupons, but what I would recommend is that it's always better excuse me, it's always better to go ahead and use them up on things that you need, even if they're full price, than to just waste them. Um, so, And that is what we do in Walgreens. I can never get back into Walgreens before a register award expires in 14 days. It's just, I'm just not in there very often. It's impossible for me. So before I even leave the store, I already have a plan on exactly what's going to burn those register award deals. It's usually on some higher price items that I know we need that don't ever come to be free. Like my husband needs Prilosec. Um, that's some expensive stuff. Well, I would gladly burn some register awards. Use a manufacturer's coupon too to get a much better price on something that we have to have than to let them expire and have no savings whatsoever from them. So hopefully that helps. What are the best things to buy or stock up on in September? Humorously, um, this may not be grocery wise, but the best thing to buy in September, Ashley, is a cruise. Uh, lowest prices of the whole year, so since we're probably not going to go on a cruise anytime soon, the other things to grab right now, soup just came back on sale. We've also got a ton of soup coupons that all starts on September 1st. We'll see that run all the way through April, but we do see kind of a big push when soup comes back from the manufacturers and from the stores. They've had soup sitting on their shelf all summer that hasn't moved, 
and they would love to start dusting it off. So um, it's a great thing to grab in September. The other things to grab in September are the last little bits of produce. If you can make trips to the farmer's market, this is the month to do it and to buy in bulk and to freeze whatever you can find that they still have. Corn, okra, peas, um, there are lots of things that are there that will not be there in October. So I don't know if you were planning on a, a visit to the farmer's market, but it, it's a, just a huge month to kind of stock up on vegetables all the way around because once we hit October, we've got good root vegetable deals, but we don't have a lot of above ground vegetable deals from really October until almost March and April. So we want to get stocked up on them in September while we can, and I would recommend if you could to try to use a lot of your grocery budget to do that. Just say, you know what, we're going to go crazy on vegetables this month. We're going to eat off the pantry if we can to save some money so that we can do that. Nicole says, I'm relatively new at couponing about six weeks, and I'm just now starting to have coupons for the sale items at Publix. However, I still feel like I should be saving more than what I am. Um, it can be very normal to feel this way, Nicole. The first thing I would ask you is, how many brand loyalties do you have? So when you're shopping the sale items at Publix, are you really looking for the lowest deals or are you looking for specific brands and sales on those specific brands? Because this is where most people get hung up when they first get started. You love Tide or you love um, you know, Cascade, I, probably a whole bunch of household cleaners that a lot of us live in in brand loyalty land. But the problem is that when you love one brand a lot, and yes, you may find a deal on that brand, it will never compare, compare to a, another brand and a much better price. Um, so I would encourage you as you get started to kind of look for whoever has the best price. If peanut butter is on sale and this week I can get Peter Pan for $1.50 a jar, but maybe in reality I can get peanut butter for less than 75 cents a jar if I just wait a couple weeks for another brand. Um, one thing to help you with that, I would use the item search that's on Southern Savers and I would use it in a very vague sense. So I would type in peanut butter uh, and you can put in a date from the past. You'll see the date box there. Use that to search historically. So um, I put in peanut butter, I search over the last month. Show me all the deals on peanut butter for the last month. Um, before you do that, to make this slightly easier, make sure under your profile on Southern Savers that you have selected only the stores that you shop in or else it's going to return de the deals for all 32 stores on Southern Savers for the last month and you don't really want to see that. So just select under your profile the four or five stores that you have in your area, then search for the last month or the deals on peanut butter. Why do I want to do that? Well now I know for the last month what kind of the lowest price we've seen. Kind of skim the list and say, oh wow, Skippy. Skippy got down to 75 cents a jar or whatever it is so that you can kind of decide what brands or even what prices you're looking for. Maybe it's not a brand specifically, it's just, okay, I want to try to get peanut butter when it's a dollar a jar. Um, I know that's a vague example, but hopefully you can kind of compare that um, to what you're doing right now in the store so that you're making sure you're getting the best deal that's out there and the best price that's out there no matter the product slash brand. Um, also making sure that in your couponing, uh, Nicole, that you're getting enough of what's on sale to last you six weeks so that you don't have to pay full price for it because our true savings in Publix is to pay nothing or to buy nothing that is full price. So I only want to pay for the items that are on sale that I have coupons for and I want to ignore the rest of the store. So if you're still going into Publix with kind of a list of things that you're out of that you have to have, you're never really going to feel like you got the best savings that you could have possibly gotten um, because you're still in the land of things that aren't on sale. So it's working your way out of that mode too. Um, Yvonne is saying uh, along the whole bulk versus what's on sale that BJ's um, takes coupons and that you can use more than one based on the number of units in the package. Yes, that is right. And we actually cover BJ's on Southern Savers. So you can see some of the deals there. I'll still warn you, it still doesn't come down to grocery sale prices because grocery stores have a sale and BJ's really doesn't. BJ's has a monthly flyer that has the coupons in it. But they don't necessarily put the items on sale as well. They just give you a store coupon. Um, but you need to kind of go by either the buy price list that you can print from Southern Savers. If you go to the learn to coupon page on Southern Savers, you'll be able to get 
just print it out. I don't want to pay more than a dollar for a box of cereal. So if BJ's has three boxes of General Mills cereal, they're in a big box together, they're asking $7 for those three boxes of cereal, I can use three manufacturers coupons on, all, on that huge box, but that's going to bring those three boxes of cereal maybe down to about $5.50. If you assume you have three 50 cent coupons, they don't double. So we now owe $5.50 on three boxes of cereal. I would never pay more than $3 for three boxes of cereal. So you have to kind of still look at how much we would pay per unit and are we still hitting it? Some items, yes, there are some deals in BJ's, um, but some items, no. So just look at the list that's there and you can kind of base it on the per unit price as to how much you would really be willing to pay. Taking into account doubling coupons for grocery shopping, which would you say was better to shop at? Kroger that doesn't double or Harvey's that does in Southeast Georgia? Mandy, that's a tricky one because what you're doing is comparing a huge grocery store that has bigger sales to a smaller grocery store that doesn't have bigger sales but is doubling coupons. Um, I almost would tend to tell you that Kroger's probably going to win out because their sales are going to be a deeper discount than Harvey's sales, excluding their Wednesday specials, if they're still running those. Harvey's is now so tiny, um, since most of the Harvey's were bought by Bilo and turned into hometown Bilo's or turned into normal Bilo's, um, very few of them stayed Harvey's, uh, that you are dealing with very little buying power. If they want to go to Tide and they want to negotiate a really great deal, they just can't do it. Where Kroger is the largest grocer in the United States um, that is a true grocery store, they have that bargaining power. And Kroger shows that in their mega events. That's truly probably the weeks that I would be in Kroger. We buy five participating items and we get $5 off instantly. Those are the really fun ones lately. Or you buy 10 participating items and you get $5 off instantly. So I'm, it's on sale and they're giving you an instant savings and you have a coupon. While the coupon doesn't double, it's still usually going to cream the Harvey's price on most of the items that are part of that mega event. If they're not running a mega event, it's just a boring old week in Kroger, great week to go to Harvey's because boring old weeks in Kroger are not fun at all. Um, there may be two things that are actually worth grabbing in my book. Um, so I may be kind of back and forth between the two. I would, however, probably buy most of my meat in Harvey's. The smaller the grocery store, the cheaper the meat price is. It's pretty much all they have to get you in the door. Um, so they, they push them hard. Uh, where Kroger, they have really great meat markdowns, but I probably wouldn't buy a lot of their meat even on sale price. I would just wait until the, the meat department marked it down, learn their day, and always shop on that day. It's a long answer, but hopefully what you wanted to hear. Um, Okay. If you have a BJ's, they accept a store coupon and a manufacturer's coupon. Um, so yes, we kind of already hit this earlier. I think a whole bunch of people commented on BJ's while I was chatting on bulk. Um, so, and again, there can definitely be deals to have in BJ's. So look at the lists that are on Southern Savers. Usually there's multiple lists. We'll have another one that comes up this Friday, um, but we try to get them up every other week. So just look at those and see what we're doing is comparing all the store coupons that are out there and then matching all of those with manufacturers coupons and giving you the prices for the items. So that's your biggest savings. If you've got a store coupon and multiple manufacturers coupons, that's where your true BJ sales are going to be, um, not just on regular price deals with a manufacturer's coupon. I really want the store coupon to pair in for the best sale. Um, Okay, Jessica's saying that her CVS wouldn't take the expired coupon. The next thing you could try, Jessica, is actually to call CVS Corporate and to tell them on the phone, I screwed up. My CVS uh, extra care buck expired. Many times corporate will reload it to your card to print again the next time you're in the store. They won't do this forever, so if you call them every month, they're not going to keep doing it, but they will do it once or twice. Um, if you lost it or it expired or something happened, they, they will try to fix it. Uh, we're trying to focus more on meat, fruits, veggies as we move into a healthier lifestyle and we look, we're look, we looking at buying a freezer 
Any suggestions on a great freezer or what to look for? And do we need a vacuum sealer? Freezers are tricky. If you have the money, it's a little bit more, not a lot more, but a little bit more. I would look at getting a stand-up freezer, not a chest freezer. Chest freezers are the cheap guys. But the problem is that chest freezers are like this no man's land down the bottom. And you can have all the good intentions in the world of knowing what's in the bottom of that chest freezer. But come six months, you are going to have no clue what is in the bottom of that chest freezer. Um, where a stand-up freezer, I can see everything right there on the shelves in front of me. You'll still lose things in a stand-up freezer, but you'll lose a lot less than you will in a chest freezer. So that would be mine. I have owned the chest freezer, and since then we have traded the chest freezer for a stand-up. Um, so I would push you there. Vacuum sealer, having done before and we now own one, I would also say that it is a good purchase. Is it a needed purchase? Not necessarily. Um, does it help you in the end? Definitely. Uh, you're going to extend the life of your meat and your produce by probably about six months in the freezer. So if I put meat in the freezer in a normal Ziploc bag, it's going to be good for about two, two and a half months, and it's definitely going to have freezer burn by the third month. If I put it into the freezer in a vacuum sealed bag, it's good for nine, ten months. Um, I haven't left it in there past that, but I don't have to worry about it. We're, we're going to eat it up long before it gets freezer burn, especially on the produce because, you know, I'm telling you it's September. I want you to go to the farmer's market and buy pretty much whatever they have left. That produce, I need it to last me until March, until produce is back on sale again. So I actually need to be able to put a lot up in it for it to last a long time. A vacuum sealer is a great way to go. If you're looking for a deal on a vacuum sealer, I push a lot of people to this. I'd actually ask you to wait. Uh, I know I'm telling you to buy a ton right now, but uh, we're going to see, usually in October and November, we see Food Saver put out a $25 off printable coupon because they're hoping folks will buy them for Christmas. So you can use that manufacturer's coupon, head to Bed Bath & Beyond, and use a 20% off Bed Bath & Beyond store coupon, and you're going to have a really great deal on a Food Saver vacuum sealer, which that's kind of the name brand of vacuum sealers. Uh, but you'll save between those two, the 20% and the $25, Probably a good almost fifty to seventy dollars off of the price of one. Can you explain in what order we should be using discounts? If for some, for instance, we have store coupons, manufacturers coupons, dollar off total purchase, etc. Yep. So first off, always that dollar off a total purchase. Um, so this week, for instance, we have the ten dollars off any forty dollar purchase of plus up products at Target. That guy's first. Then we're going to use any other store coupons you have for plus up products. Uh, and you're obviously not going to have any manufacturer's coupons, but even cartwheels are coming after that. That 10 off 40, that total off or dollar off a total purchase always first. Then anything else you have, store versus manufacturer doesn't really always matter. The only store that it really matters in is that register awards always be used last. In Walgreens, I always use any regular manufacturer's coupon I have first, then a register award. Because if I don't have enough products and the computer is going to start beeping and reject a coupon, I want it to reject the register award. Because I can give it this little 10 cent piece of Laffy Taffy and it will gladly take it. But if the coupon takes the register award and rejects my Pantene coupon, I have to buy a Pantene to use my Pantene coupon. Um, so, And that may be hard to follow if you're not a normal Walgreens shopper. But in most stores, dollar off total purchase first, then manufacturer or store, that part doesn't necessarily matter unless it's specific there to needing a total purchase. And then last is any rewards like CVS plus, uh, Extra Care Bucks or Rite Aid Plus Up Rewards and Walgreens Register Awards. Just always using those last. They're currency in most stores, so treat them like currency. Um, is probably the best bet. One other thing, Brian, to kind of throw in on the mix is competitor coupons. If you have a grocery store that accepts them, so in my area that's buy low and Publix accept competitor coupons. In other areas, Lowe's Foods, Harris Teeter, I like to always put those together. If I don't have a dollar off a total purchase coupon, my competitor coupons are first, and I put them at the top of the stack. And I do it on purpose to try to make it a little easier on the cashier. 
because she can't key them in the same way. I'm just kind of, so that way they're not going to work and I can just say, hey, those are competitors, all three of those. You're going to have to, you know, deal with them separately. And, and they know what to do with them by now. Two years ago they didn't, but you're still making it slightly easier for them. Other folks would also say, you know, sticking any coupons you have for free products where they actually have to write the value, even if you could stick those with the products on the conveyor belt, makes their life even simpler. Now, sometimes the cashiers aren't bright enough to see that, and they just take it right off and they scan the product, but you really are helping them so that they could write down the price right now. Um, that may be another one to do, but not necessary in the whole grand scheme of things, just making their life a little easier. Um, I sometimes forget to submit my receipts for the coupon apps. Check off of D1, Ibotta. Can you suggest a system for keeping these organized so you don't forget about them when you leave the store? Um, for me, I do them in the car as I'm unloading the buggy in the parking lot. My kids are already buckled, so I don't have to worry about them running around. I usually turn the car on so they're not crazy hot. Um, Checkout 51 is super easy because I don't even have to scan barcodes. I just need to scan a picture of the receipt. So I'll lay the receipt out along the bumper of the car, take pictures of the receipt, and go ahead and do Checkout 51 right now. I bought a, that can be tricky if you've bought a ton because it can be all in different bags. If you're not wanting to do it right there in the parking lot, then you do it before they even get put up at home. But it's just part of the routine. Thankfully, most of the time that we shop, we have at least one of those companies to submit a coupon for. So the more that you do them, the more routine it gets. If you just say, you know what, no grocery hits a shelf until I have submitted these um, two or three apps, however many you're doing, that's going to help you a lot, just setting that system up in your mind. How often do we see Harris Teeter do super doubles? And is it worth holding on to some of my higher value coupons in hopes that they'll have a sale if I'm not desperately in need of them? Yes, it's always worth holding on to coupons, especially if you're not going to need them or it's not a product you're completely out of right now. Odds are Harris Teeter is not going to get a great normal price on it anyway. So using the coupon just because you thought it was going to expire, not wise. I want to only use the coupon when the item's on sale. But for super doubles, we do see it usually once a month. My guess was actually that we were going to see it this this week. We are not. It's not going to be the 17th. History-wise, it should have been the 17th. Hoping that we see the 24th of September, which is next Wednesday. But I haven't heard a single thing about that either, and I usually hear rumors by now. Um, so we'll have to see what happens. They may be skipping a September event, which is hard to imagine. Um, they do not run any events for Harris Teeter over the holidays, so we won't see an event the end of November. Usually we don't see one in November at all. And we do see one right at the beginning of the year, so sometimes it's even over New Year's weekend, depending on where New Year's falls in. Um, so just kind of look for that. We'll hopefully have one the 24th, hopefully have one in October, and then we won't have one again until January. Kind of gives you a long schedule out. Again, Harris Teeter, though, was bought by Kroger this time last year, so we have to kind of see how that plays out month by month. I kind of wait for Kroger to just pull those purse strings in and say, like, you're done, you're out, um, but hopefully we'll keep seeing them happen. Which newspaper subscription would you suggest? Um, not much where you live. So I get sundaycouponinserts.com. That's the website, sundaycouponinserts.com. They have a standing subscription for a number of different um, values of inserts. Their lowest one is four. So it, it's like getting four papers. You have four of every set of inserts that came out. Uh, and that on a normal Sunday, because they charge by the insert, uh, the nor a normal Sunday of two inserts in the paper cost between $9 and $12. Um, I don't need four papers. I'd actually encourage most people to not get that many. The more you get, the more time it takes. You have to cut them. You have to keep up with them, yada, yada, yada. Um, so I would actually say if you do choose to get the four, split it with a friend so that you take two and she takes two. But don't feel overwhelmed like you have to hold on to all four of them. Uh, the price for me comes out to be the exact same price as a Sunday paper. So I'm very content in doing it. It's no added cost whatsoever. It comes straight to the mailbox. You obviously don't get them on Sunday, but for me, they're in my mailbox on Wednesday, so I get them a few days later. And I can get the Atlanta paper this way versus getting my local paper. Um, so it can be worthwhile. Again, the website was sundaycouponinserts.com.
Um, Ashley says that she started couponing about six weeks ago and have used the Publix weekly deals um, and saved between 50 and 80 percent by doing so. Um, that's awesome, Ashley. I'm glad to see that it's working for you. Where again, you know, someone has already said tonight that it's not. They're six weeks in and this is hard and they're not really seeing the savings they thought they were. So it's great that you've picked it all up. And I encourage you to kind of, you know, share that and get other folks to kind of get on board too. If you're new and you're not picking up the 50 to 80 percent, don't be discouraged. It takes some folks more time. And like I was saying earlier, it could be that you've got a lot of brand loyalties that you've got to kind of work through, or you've got to see your specific brands actually come on a good sale um, and stock up on those. If you are really, really brand loyal and you're just not going to give it up, then we got to get stocked on what we need and maybe even stock up more than six weeks if you see a really great price on your brand so that you're set, because it could be a while. We see peanut butter on sale every six weeks, but we don't see specific peanut butters on sale every six weeks. Um, okay, we've got a lot of questions tonight. You guys are keeping me hopping. Um, I'm struggling saving at Target. I use Cartwheel and Target coupons and manufacturer's coupons, but Harris Teeter still seems to win every time, and I feel like Target is taking more time than I have for the little extra things it offers. Jessica, I would completely agree with you. Your question just, um, oh, there we go. It doesn't want to go to the um, to the actual like question box. Um, here we go. I would agree with you. Target for me is like a treasure hunt. And while I love going in there for the occasional deal, like right now there's a crazy good deal on cleaning supplies this week that are 84 cents a piece. Yes, you know, I would gladly be in there. I actually don't need a single cleaning supply for like, 10 months, so we're going to we're gonna hold off in our house, um, but I won't go into Target with a long list, and that was one of the first things I had to learn in couponing. I went in with a crazy long list of things that I thought were all going to be free, and there wasn't a website helping me. I just kind of had done this. This was eight years ago. Just made a list, and all I did was go from one corner of the store to the other corner to the other corner to the other corner. I found maybe five of what I thought I was going to find and left really, really discouraged. And so after that, kind of decided no more huge, we're going to do some massive trip in Target. We're going to go in, we're going to get a few of the things that are on sale and we're only going to do it if we're in the area or if a deal is crazy, crazy good on something that we need. Um, if you're in the area though, for anyone else other than Jessica or myself, and you have a Target right near you, there are some fun deals to have using all of their store coupons and their text offers. They send text message mobile coupons. Um, if you aren't getting those, text 827438, the word offers, and that will sign you up. So they have all of those. They have Cartwheel, which is an app or you can use online, and they take manufacturer's coupons, and they'll take all three of those off of one product. So it can actually make for some really good deals. Plus, they have all the gift card deals, which is where the cleaning supplies come in this week. It's by, I think, what, four cleaning supplies, get a $5 gift card, plus you've got coupons for all of those items. So those can be good deals, but you're never going to go in and stockpile on anything. You're usually going to get one, maybe two of an item, but never more than that because you're always limited on the number of store coupons that you have. You can only print one. Mobile-wise, I only have one. I can't get more text message coupons, so I'm not going in and buying 10 of anything, especially if part of the the deal is having the store coupon and the manufacturer's coupon on the cartwheel. Well, I can't when I've only got one store coupon. I'm very limited. Um, I've heard that coupons on the West Coast are higher prices uh, because prices are higher out there. Is it worth it to get coupons from clipping services on the West Coast, or is there really not a difference? Honestly, I would say there's not really a difference. Um, it, it seems like there should be, but we really don't see that big of a difference because, in all honesty, there aren't that many people couponing on the West Coast. Um, your biggest bet is just to get the biggest city that you can. So if you want to go with a coupon clipping service that you get one that you know is giving you the Atlanta Journal, Charlotte Observer, Jacksonville, Florida Times Union, um, those are the three biggest papers in the Southeast. If you're not in the southeast and you want to go for a different area, that's fine, but I want to go for, you know, Houston, Texas, Dallas, Texas. I want to stick with some really, really big cities so that we're getting some of the best offers that are out there. 
um, that's going to be the bigger savings. Not necessarily that LA got a 60 cent coupon and Atlanta got a 50 cent coupon. Not really a huge difference in savings. Uh, if anything, sometimes it's going to be getting the Atlanta paper meant that it doubled and getting the LA paper meant that it didn't, depending on the store that you're in. Um, I don't know. That's what I would play with. I would just stick with big cities on the East Coast and you'd be just fine. Been couponing for about two months now, wondering if you can give me a tip on how to stock up on bath tissue. Um, bath tissue is going to depend on the brand that you use. This is one where we have a loyalty in our house. It has to be Cottonelle or Charmin or people get upset. Um, for us, that is always going to be a drugstore purchase. I'm going to wait until CVS has them slightly on sale and puts them as part of a big extra care buck purchase. So buy $30 worth of any of these participating products. It's usually a big group and get a $10 extra care buck. Or right now it's a $10 gift card. I want to go in. I want to buy $30 worth of bath tissue. We'll usually end up usually end up in, uh, sorry usually ends up requiring a purchase of three items to hit the $30 based on the sale price. So I'll either do two bath tissues and a paper towel, or I'll do two paper towels and a bath tissue. But we see this every month. So you just get in the habit of buying these once a month when we see them in the drugstores. I'm going to use coupons on all of them. If I have extra care bucks from a previous purchase, I'm going to use that to bring down the price as much as I can. I still earn the reward um, on the $30 purchase. Even if I paid $19 after extra care bucks and after coupons, I'm still going to earn the $10 bucks back. Um, so you've got an incredible price on those three packages of paper goods once you factor in the next reward that you just got back as well. I noticed this past week the Dollar General did not have a $5 off coupon. Are they eliminating, el eliminating it, making it only available on mobile? Um, it was interesting that we didn't see one. They currently still have one available for school supplies for another week or so, um, but not on your total purchase. I've not heard anything, though, that they're getting rid of them. It probably, if anything, is just that they're kind of taking a little lull in the middle of the month. Um, we also tend to see stores like Dollar General kind of um, gear up on coupons and offers at the end of the month. They're backwards from a normal grocery store. But you have to kind of think of clientele here. Um, most people are very, very broke by the end of the month. Um, so Dollar General to encourage shopping is going to increase offers at the end of the month to try to get you to come in and actually shop even if you don't have money. Um, so when it gets to be the beginning of the month or sometimes even the middle, they're laying low. Um, waiting for those end of the month shoppers to encourage them and then they still go big on the first of the month you just got your paycheck and they want you to spend it all with them this is when the grocery stores go big so if you want to know the worst week to go grocery shopping it's always the last week of the month there are never great sales the last week of the month in grocery stores they know you're broke and they save all the deals that first week of the month the ads gonna be massive because they know that folks just got paid they have a ton of money we're gonna throw all the sales at them as possible so that they'll come in and they'll just buy them all, um, but Dollar General and Family Dollar tend to be backwards, tend to be end of the month deals, uh, not so much beginning of the month. I'm a Southern Cal girl living in Southeast Georgia. My dad sends me coupons from the LA, Los Angeles Times from time to time. Coupons are a higher value and more per insert, but it's very hard to find a clipping service out there. So Jennifer's kind of answering your question for you, Brian. Thank you. Um, it's been years since I got an LA Times Sunday paper and it was just because I was in LA on a Sunday. Um, is it worth it in the long run? I don't know, like clipping wise, that your savings will be any big of a difference between the two, but you could try to find it if you wanted to. Um, Ashley asked, is school clearance still going on at Target? Last week they had 50%. Yes, Ashley, it is. People are even reporting like glue sticks are ringing up for two cents. Uh, so it's even lower. It's more to the 70% to 90% on some items. And they're still running a $5 gift card back when you buy $25. Now that would be a ton of glue at two cents for glue sticks. But if you text target the word school and the number four, you'll get a text message coupon for a $5 gift card with any $25 purchase. Keep in mind it has to be $25 after coupons and after the sale. So you, you got to buy a lot. But if you needed stuff, Make sure you get the gift card too. Um, I'm 
Okay, let's see. I think that we've hit most of the questions and we're actually over on time. I always try to end us at 9.30. Um, but we're going to have a hangout next week as well. We're just going to continue until um, the end of the month. So every Monday night at 8.30. And next week, you guys already started it this week, I think. But next week, I just decided we wouldn't really have a topic to start us off with. Instead, we'll just make the whole week stump Jenny. So just bring whatever questions you have and we'll go the gamut from drugstores to mobile apps to whatever you want to talk about. Um, but thanks for joining me tonight. I hope you guys learned some new things and got some questions asked. Um, we'll see you next week.